cortex in all directions. The thalamus has multiple functions. It may be thought of as kind of a switchboard of information. It is generally believed to act as a relay between a variety of subcortical areas and the cerebral cortex. In particular, every sensory system includes a thalamic nucleus that receives sensory signals and sends them to the associated primal cortical area. The thymus would still be active in stage four of Kachari, just receiving electricity from the tongue instead of the senses. Notice that the brain stem is all about the senses, respiration, and circulation, the very things we are supposed to shut down to reach nervicalpa samadhi. When the breath shuts down, part of the mind shuts down. When the breath stops, the time-based reality stops. Thinking about the past and the future happens only when you make a concerted effort to focus on it. When you can shut off the senses, you make it to samadhi or the void. When you raise the kundalini through the brahmanadi, with the energy going to the sahasrara, enlightenment takes place. The key is directing where and how the electricity flows in your body. From the book Mijda, a book about the early life of Yogananda. During the practice of Kriya, the prana, and therefore the mind or consciousness, which draws from the senses and pierces the cerebral spinal chakras as it's drawn upward and becomes settled at the top of the shashumna. Through the performance of Kachari Mudra, that divine life current draws the prana from the senses into the spine and directs it up through the chakras to the universal spirit, uniting the consciousness with spirit. The entire body is thereby spiritualized and energized. As a result, a perceptible glow may emanate from the body. The goal of yoga is to bypass the brainstem or transcend the mind. Basically, what Jesus was saying in Matthew 6.22 is that the electricity in the body can flow or take one of two paths, heaven or hell. When thine eye is single, other interpretations say clear or good, the electricity flows to the Ashna chakra or third eye, and when the electricity flows through the brainstem, you see through your physical eyes. One path gives you body consciousness, the other gives you God consciousness. Number three, Kachari Mudra allows the Sadaka to balance the nadis, which then makes the electricity of the body go up the Shashuma or Brahma Nadi. Jesus said in the Gospel of Thomas, if two make peace with each other in this one house, they will say to the mountain, move away, and it will move away. As I spoke about earlier, you have three main nadis where the electricity flows in your body. The central nervous system, in yoga parlance, this is known as the shashuma, the parasympathetic nervous system, or ida nadi, and the sympathetic nervous system, or pingala nadi. When you have a sensory experience, the electricity flows through two different systems in the body, both the parasympathetic nervous system Ida, and the sympathetic nervous system, Pingala. The Ida Nadi is responsible for telling you what you are experiencing. The Pingala Nadi is responsible for the fight or flight response, and so it can't waste time trying to figure out what it is you are experiencing, because it could possibly be life-threatening. The Pingala puts the electrical sensation through the catalog of sensations that you've already experienced, and if deemed to be threatening, immediately takes the appropriate bodily response. It is the reconciliation of these two signals that come in from the same experience that causes thought or vibration. Think about how your body reacts when it hears a, a loud noise. There are two reactions. One primes the body for action while waiting for instructions. If there is pain involved, such as touching a hot stove, the sympathetic nervous system which draws from the source before getting instructions from the parasympathetic nervous system. As long as the Ashna chakra is not open, you will experience the world through these two systems that bring about body consciousness. As long as the energy is predominantly traveling through the Ida or Pingala Nadi, your brain is imbalanced and you will remain in body consciousness. The breath brings prana into the body causing this imbalance. As I spoke about earlier, Swami Shivananda taught that we don't breathe for the oxygen in the air, we breathe for the prana or to get the electricity in the air into our lungs. The body places a positive charge to all the prana that you breathe in through your right nostril and a negative charge to all the prana that you breathe in through your left nostril. Positive prana powers up the sympathetic nervous system 
or the pingla nadi in yogic terms, and the negative prana powers up the parasympathetic nervous system or ida nadi. This prana travels down to the muladhara chakra and then depending on which nadi is currently dominant, starts spinning the chakras to the right or to the left depending on which nostril is currently providing the majority of the air. When the polarity of the body switches and the nostrils alternate their dominance, the rotation of the chakra first slows down, stops, and then changes direction of its spin. In yogic terms, it is not important which direction the chakras are spinning because as long as the chakras spin, the prana is being used to experience the external world. When you balance the polarity long enough so that the muladhara chakra stops spinning, the chakra opens and the prana starts traveling up the central nervous system. This internalizes your consciousness and your spiritual journey begins. The practice of a breathing technique known as Nadi Shodhana and Aloma Viloma or alternate nostril breathing brings about a balance of the Ida Nadi and Pingla Nadi so that the electricity starts flowing up the Shashumna. When the Nadis are balanced, the nostrils open up and dilate. Many people have practiced this breathing technique in yoga classes. Using the fingers to close off the nostrils is cumbersome and distracting, whereas using the tongue internally to do this takes a lot less effort. This is achieved by sticking the tongue up the nasal pharynx and up one of the nostrils, sealing it off like a cork in a bottle. The inner ears that cover the estachian tubes are physiologically designed to help you turn your tongue sideways so it can slide up the turbinate area of your nostril to the 10th gate. Kachari Mudra also gives you the added benefit of the next topic, which is number four, allows the sadaka to rub a nerve center, which leads to dharana or one pointedness of mind. At the top of your nasal septum is a bundle of nerves. When the tongue touches this area, you can feel the electricity flowing through the tongue. The uvula is actually a transformer and uses this electricity to burn up the rest of the frenulum, allowing your tongue to go deeper into kachari. Most people have a hard time meditating because the mind and the five senses act as telephones, constantly ringing, demanding your attention. When the tongue makes a connection with the top of the nasal septum, a buzz is felt that is almost sexual in nature. Everybody has had the tingly feeling that you feel when you're about to sneeze, but for some reason you can't quite sneeze. Suddenly you feel the sneeze coming on and a sense of relief and a buzz is felt in the upper nasal area. Kachari Mudra allows you to rub these nerves and brings about this feeling. This feeling draws the attention away from the senses and the desires of the mind and you focus on the contact that is made with the tongue. Number five. Kachari Mudra assists in turning on your kundalini or opens up the knot at the muladhara chakra. This is a big one because basically I'm telling you that you have something in your body that is dormant that you are not aware of. Throughout your life, you may have had glimpses of the electrical nature of the world and your body. For example, when my yoga instructor first showed me the small particles of electricity floating around in the air above the ocean, I immediately remembered watching them with great fascination as a small child. Another fascinating thing was dragging your feet around on a rug or a carpet and then touching your brother with your finger, shocking him. Whenever you fly in an airplane and go through clouds, look out the window. You will see little white sparks of electricity dancing everywhere. This is prana. The electrical system in our bodies is largely dormant because it is unbalanced and has blockages in it that doesn't allow the electricity to flow properly. The Bible refers to these blockages as the seven seals. The senses are designed to pick up various electricities from the world. The sensation of smell is nothing more than when one of these electricities touches your olfactory nerves. The sensation of taste is when one of these electricities touches your tongue. Vibrations touch your ears, light hits your eyes, and energy touches your skin. All your sensations are made up of energy touching your body in one form or another that is interpreted within. The turning on your kundalini nomenclature refers to opening up the knot at the muladhara chakra and sending up the prana through the shashuma as opposed to it going up the ida or pingala nadis. The way this is achieved through kundalini yoga is you have to balance the nadis with nadi shohana so the prana starts traveling up the shashuma. 
The Chari Mudra prevents the outgoing air from stimulating the nerves on the roof of your mouth to send a signal to the diaphragm to contract. The practice of Kachari Mudra stills the diaphragm. Mulabandha sends more prana up to Shashuma. Jalahandra Bandha locks the prana in. And finally, Uddiyana Bandha allows a combination of prana that causes the kundalini to ignite. There are several forms of prana or electricities in the body. A practice known as Maha Bandha ignites the kundalini. The word Maha means great and the word Bandha means lock. Maha Bandha means the great lock. It is comprised of three Bandhas, Mula Bandha, Uddiyana Bandha, and Jalahandra Bandha. Mula Bandha is the contraction of the perineum or pelvic floor. Uddiyana Bandha is exhaling all the air out of your breathing chambers and pulling the stomach in and up, creating a vacuum in the breathing chambers. Jalahandra Bandha is bringing the head down so the chin touches the breastbone, locking the prana in. These three bandhas, in combination with Kachari Mudra, turn on your kundalini. Number six, Kachari Mudra allows the sadaka to push on a nerve center, shutting off all sensory perception. There is a bundle of nerves above the nasal turbinate area where the sensory perceptions of the eyes, ears, nose, and mouth go through. When your Kachari has advanced far enough, you can push on this bone which causes a compression of these nerves and stops all nerve signals from reaching the brainstem. With no electricity going to the brainstem, the mind shuts down, freeing the consciousness. In yoga parlance, this is called samadhi. You can see that the bone that you press on extends out like a diving board and the bones supporting it are designed to bend, allowing this compression to take place. Number seven. Kachari Mudra allows the Sadaka to drink from the fountain of youth or King Arthur's Holy Grail. The liquid the brain makes is contained in this cup-like bone, is also known as Iwahaska by the shamans in the rainforest, Amrita by the yogis, and DMT by Western scientists. This liquid separates the consciousness from the mind. In the Gospel of Thomas, Jesus saw infants being suckled. He said to his disciples, these infants being suckled are like those who enter the kingdom, referring to Kachari reaching the Amrita. When stimulated with electricity from your tongue, your pituitary gland and the pineal gland make a white and yellow liquid respectively, and when they combine, they create a chemical compound that Western scientists call DMT. This compound collects in the cella tersica, which is a cup-like bone that houses the pituitary gland and is euphemistically known as the Fountain of Youth or King Arthur's Holy Grail. This liquid literally shuts down the mind and frees the consciousness to experience its true nature or oneness with the divine. When the electricity flows right under the pituitary gland, it starts vibrating, which causes the pineal gland to start vibrating, and they both produce copious amounts of this liquid. When this liquid is absorbed by the tongue, instant samadhi takes place. This is the goal of yoga on the physical plane. When Jesus was fasting out in the desert for 40 days, he was in a deep meditation drinking this liquid. The yogis call this liquid Amrita. This liquid allows the Sadaka to live without eating or drinking anything. All illnesses disappear and youth returns. You can live in heaven, God consciousness, or hell, body consciousness. It is your choice. When the snake tempted Eve in the Garden of Eden with the apple, Eve took a bite of the apple and she gained access to the tree of knowledge or knowledge of the body. It was an allegory for the kundalini residing in the lower chakras or hell. The snake is a metaphor for her spine. The apple is a metaphor for sex. When the kundalini resides in the sex or stomach chakras, just like an animal, you are only concerned with survival and procreation, sex and food. When the kundalini is raised to the higher chakras, the heart, throat, third eye, and crown chakra, your thoughts are dominated by love, intellect, and the divine. When your chakras are opened, you gain access to the tree of life or knowledge of God. In Genesis 1.27, it says, God created man in his own image. This does not mean that God has two arms and two legs. This means that God also has these chakras. Adam and Eve's falling was delving into body consciousness. The choice is yours. 
Where do you want to place your energy? I would like to end this talk with a few questions to you. Why are the Catholic and Christian churches hiding the most important teachings of Jesus? Does anybody really believe that they didn't know where Jesus was from the age 13 to 30? Why are our government-funded schools teaching us the nonsense that we evolved from monkeys? Why are we brainwashed into believe that anyone who believes in creation is intellectually challenged? Life is not evolving. Consciousness is evolving. Anybody that understands DNA, the fact that a blueprint of how you are designed is in every one of your trillions of cells knows that we were created. In understanding DNA, you have to be intellectually challenged to believe in evolution. Why is there a concerted effort to keep the truth about who and what we are away from us? And most importantly, are you willing to spend 15 minutes each morning and night doing some simple exercises to attain enlightenment in this incarnation? One of these incarnations, you're going to have to do it. You cannot enter the kingdom of heaven without your spiritual birth. In the Gospel of Thomas, Logos 2, Jesus said, Let him who seeks continue seeking until he finds. When he finds, he will become troubled. When he becomes troubled, he will be astonished, and he will rule over the all. As Jesus said in John 14, 12, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. There really are two parallel worlds you can live in. You can call them whatever you like, heaven or hell, the tree of life or the tree of knowledge, serving God or serving mammon, your chakras or your body, God consciousness or body consciousness. There is an internal world and an external world. You can follow whatever religion you like, but there is only one path to the Father. The reality is you are all sons and daughters of the living Father. God sheds pieces of light and creates us like a plant sheds seeds. You are a piece of God. You are God playing an elaborate game of hide and seek with yourself. And you will continue to play this game until you open up your seven chakras. This is your destiny.